Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are here, we are back. Thank you so much for joining us. I am really excited for today, but it's also super, super bittersweet. We are back again this week for the final installment of the Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp series. And today it's, it's gonna be a little bit different. Over the last six months, we've been gathering for six months. And it, it's been interesting because we've got to speak with so many different dynamic um, facilitators. We've spoken to a business attorneys where we're laying the foundation for our businesses. We've spoken to sales gurus and, and marketing experts on what does it mean to start generating sales in our business and how to really shift our mindset around not just trying to get money, but really focusing on making the impact, building legacies so that there is something after we leave. And then we also kind of took a little bit of a different turn where we started talking about hiring because a lot of us have been solopreneurs for so long and we need to make sure that we're not wearing all the hats in our businesses so that we can number one run our nonprofits like businesses because they are but also make sure that we are focusing on the revenue generating activities and so that was a really great conversation with Aziza where we talked about how to hire and what that looks like to begin delegating and then we we also had a conversation around one of my favorite topics on partnership and collaboration. And today, again, at our final installment, we are talking about side hustling and not to quit your day job too soon. But here's the thing. We have a super, super amazing guest facilitator with us today. Her name is Pollyanna Reed, and she is a journalist, a celebrity ghostwriter, a mentor. She's she's the go, but I'm gonna, we're gonna get into that very, very soon. Again, I wanted to just make sure that we are understanding that COVID-19 has affected communities across the globe. And these 12 by weekly business sense workshops are designed for the nonprofit founder, the service-based business owner, as well as corporate leaders in order to help us all remain proactive in increasing our knowledge and developing your skills as we navigate this post-COVID world together. I am your host, A. Margot Blair, partnership strategist and founder of Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit organization headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona. Our mission is designed to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. Pre-Rona, we would do this through personal and business development experiences in person, um, such as conferences, trainings, as well as seminars. But as we navigate this post-COVID world at Discover Her, we are now cultivating virtual experiences such as this to teach fundamentals that may have been missed, as well to equip founders with the actionable and practical steps that you can apply to your business and life today. And the other piece, which is always great, is in order for us to grow our networks. Again, you have been connected with Summer for these last six months. You've been and connected to me, but you've also been able to connect with the other attendees as well as our guest facilitators. And so again, we just want to thank each and every single one of you for showing up to invest into you, to invest into your business and personal development. And so first and foremost, we have to, we cannot say, do this and go on without first thanking our sponsor, Comerica Bank. So Summer, welcome. Thank you much. Thank you so much for saying yes to the vision and really just being part of this entire process. So thank you so much and welcome. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, everything, all the above. I'm so excited to be here. Um, this might be our last segment within this series, um, but it's not going to be the last time that you see Comerica Bank. It's not going to be the last time you see this face, you know, hopefully in person next year, but you, we go let other people get vaccinated before we try it out. So we're going to stay on, on <laughs> virtual for a minute and, <laughs> and then we'll figure it out from there. 
but we will do this again definitely if margo is so gracious enough to host us again we would love to do this again next year and we want to get your insight too because we want to dig deeper i mean a lot of these topics are based on what was happening right now within your business for covid during covid during a pandemic during social injustice during all these things that kind of rooted up some deep you know, dark things that that happen to a lot of people and people are still hurting right now. So we kind of want to touch on businesses still, but you can't run your business if you're not whole as a person. So we want to kind of touch on that next year for Comerica Bank. And I will let you know what our goals are. Our theme next year is women, women and girls. It's all about being a strong woman, strong leader, strong girls, raising strong women, um, because the, the, a lot of the focus was always on raising strong men, boys to be men, you're raising heads of households. All these are things, but guess what? Women will be running these households for a minute. So we're going to make sure that they're empowered, that they're set right, they have the right financial focus, and they can still be a lady, still be graceful, still have those powers and, and know who they are within whom they are. So that's our goal for next year. And if you are with us, if you're, if you're, if you're still stepping with us, then we'd be happy for you guys to be a part of that, of that series next year. Um, but for today, I'm excited because it's all about not quitting your day job. I mean, it, it, the, the message is within the title, not to quit your day job. Don't quit what you're doing. Um, I'm a huge proponent of that. If anyone knows and heard anything that I've done, I do so many different things. We still wear different hats, right? We're mothers, we're sisters, we're daughters, we are, we wives, we're girlfriends, we're, we're everything. And then we also have this other side of making money, running businesses, you know, building legacies and financial freedom and, and moving and shaking and being world changers and history leaders. So we, we have to be able to know how to encompass this, but still be comfortable for having our nine to five or having our W2 job and, and, and still doing that. So I'm excited to see what Ms. Reed has to speak on. Um, I am going to be here. I'm going to be a little more vocal today because this, you know, this is something that I absolutely love and, and we can't teach this without first showing you how to do it. So I'm here, ask me questions, but I will certainly be here to chime in. Don't worry, I will chime in, <laughs> but thank you from Comerica Bank. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are gonna go ahead and dive in, but first, housekeeping. Everyone go ahead and take out your phone. Hopefully Pollyanna is up at the front. If not, it's cool, but we are gonna pose for a second so you can snap your pic. Cheese, got it. Okay, so go ahead and drop that on your preferred social platform. I see you somewhere, hold on. <laughs> no, you're good. I'm like, just make sure my face wasn't crazy. Um, but no, go ahead and go ahead and share that to your preferred social media platform, whether that's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, what have you. The reason why we're encouraging you to post not just this photo, but your quotables. There are going to be so many gems dropped through this conversation. So over the next 90 minutes, a little bit less than that, we are going to make sure that you have your notepad and your pen ready to take these notes because um, I, I have been connected to Pollyanna for about a year and a half now. Um, I met her at an event, the BYOB event out in Atlanta a couple years back, and I've been following her ever since. Her story is incredible. You're going to hear about it today, but it's not just her story that was impactful. It is what she's doing to make an impact in the lives of others. And again, as we are all social profits um, in this room, but whether you have the for-profit or non-profit, the goal is to make an impact as well as your revenue. And so we have a, an expert, a guru, someone who's experienced, she's been around the block, she's here, she knows what she's talking about. So again, make sure you have your pen and paper Paper, and then share, 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 share means caring. And again, if there is a founder you know who should be part of this conversation, whether they're on the fence of, of trying to drive into full-time entrepreneurship or um, they really want to quit their job, but they haven't set it up yet, bring them to this conversation because their questions will be answered as well as their concerns. And so one last thing, the pitch competition, the nonprofit pitch competition, we are extending the deadline one week. So you have a few more days to get all of your um, content in. There is a video that's attached to that. Go to discoverher.org backslash Comerica Business Bootcamp series and get all the details there. Make sure you read all of the nitty gritty details because you don't want to miss this opportunity. We, Comerica Bank is sponsoring a $1,000 cash prize to one nonprofit founder so take advantage of this um, we want to support you we want to be part of your development and your growth and your process so go ahead and take advantage of that and so without further ado 
Pollyanna, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And we are super excited to have you. How are you today? I'm doing really, really good. Thank you for asking. You look amazing. So we'll just go ahead and dive all the way in. This conversation is, is really um, powerful because again, like your platform, you are a journalist, you're a celebrity ghost writer, mm -hmm. and you navigate the dominate, not even just navigate, but you dominate the media industry. But when I started trying to figure out like, okay, who are we gonna bring to the table, God? Like, how are we gonna have these conversations? It was clear that we wanted you, but it was also side hustling. And I'm like, but does she even talk about that? And then I start doing my research and I'm like, yeah, like this is crazy. So tell us a little bit of, of, of who you are. And, and you know, I, I know there's so much to your story, but this like cliff note version, mm -hmm. how are, did you get to the Pollyanna read of today? Hi everyone, I'm happy to be here. Looking forward to having this conversation. Um, I'll start real basic, two parent household. Um, I'm a PK, uh, you know, traditional, you know, I was, uh, I was taught to play it safe, stay within the lines, don't color outside of them. Um, and I was the rebellious one, right? I was the one who was, you know, trying to do everything I could to, you know, defy my parents and to, you know, just be a badass. And so, you know, I've always been imaginative. I've always been a big dreamer and believer and doer. Um, but I do find that, you know, when we're little, you know, we're empowered to be anything and everything we want to be. And then we grow up and we go to high school and we go to college and then we're taught to be more realistic. So I got caught in that gray area and that's where my mental health started to, um, started to decline. Mm -hmm. um, so I was uh, depressed and anxious throughout my entire uh, school career. It got worse in college. I entered a program that I did not choose. It was selected for me um, because other people thought it was best for me. Um, you know, fell into the pits of depression. Um, second year, I uh, tried to commit suicide twice, um, ended up dropping out of school um, and telling myself that I would do anything in my power um, and I would stay committed, you know, when one of my life was spared, I would stay committed to the course and I would stay committed to figuring out like what God had in store for me. And so I'm here today because of my will to breathe, live, um, see my dream, see it before, you know, you have to see it before you can achieve it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, when everyone else was zigging, I was zagging. And so I think I just got caught up in the expectations that others had for me. Um, and the fact that, you know, they were, they were trying to put a lid on my dreams based on their work ethic, based on their self doubt, based on their lack of awareness. Um, and, you know, I really had to fight for everything that I have today. If I would have, if I would have listened to the people around me, um, I would, I would never be here. Um, luckily I had mentors who stepped in, um, uh, shortly after I dropped out of school and, um, you know, I stood on their shoulders. I stood on the shoulders of giants and they really helped me, um, you know, figure out my life's path. I told you her story is deep and it's, and it's so powerful, Kylie. And I like, we're grateful that you're here. We're grateful that God kept you, um, for so many reasons, because think about this, right? Like how many lives have continued to be impacted? And I'm not just talking about the people that you've served directly, but the people who were served because of the people you served. And then because of the people you serve, right? Like there's this whole ripple effect. Um, and I talk about this a lot with my clients and my students where I talk about um, when we aren't operating and functioning in our purpose, we're not just robbing ourselves, we're robbing other people who are called to learn from us. Mm -hmm. And so you, like, your testimony is, is literally the definition of what, what is explained in that same thing. So um, we thank you for showing up. We thank you. Um, and, and, and we're like, we, un, we, we know so many mm -hmm. other individuals have also battled with um, mental health. So I, I think that's honestly a really good place to start um, mm -hmm. the two the, the, the two sides to this, right? Um, this conversation on how mental health can impact um, your decisions to really go all in into pursuing your dreams and your passions. Can you can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I, that's really that's a really big conversation for us to have. Yeah. So uh, looking back, the one lesson that I, that stands out to me is you know, the only way I really know how to climb out of any hole that I was in is gradually, right? And, you know, I was, so I had my attempt in 2008, I was diagnosed in 2010, and I still 
live with depression. This is not like a band aid you can just rip off. Like I still live with depression. I st- to this day I still struggle with suicidal thoughts. I it's it's a, it's a choice that I have to make to be here every day. And I think you know people will see you on social media and doing your thing and running your company and managing a team. But like, just know that when you see me, I decided to be here because I struggle a lot. I fight voices inside my head that most people will never, ever understand. Like you have, you have no idea, right? So I, um, for me, my mornings are important. My mornings are very critical. Um, you know, uh, I find life is a lot easier when you start with talking with God first and um, so I have, you know, I'm really big on morning routines, you know, visualization, going over my affirmations, going over my goals, like all that stuff. I work out three times a week. Um, you ha- like, you have to put in the effort to maintain your mental health. It's not something that just, you know, just magically disappears. Um, and you have to know what your triggers are and be able to identify your triggers and try to stay steer clear of them if you can as much as possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, it definitely, because I mean, I remember being in my, in my full-time job, like crying at my desk. And asking, you know, and just like questioning everything and being frustrated. But now, like my, you know, I, I've since quit. But now my narrative is like, you know, I think that it's it's critical to be in a nine to five before jumping jumping ship because of. I mean, there's no way I'd be the entrepreneur that I am now if I didn't go through those experiences and those hardships, and if I didn't have the monster bosses, and if I didn't have to, you know, critically think, and if I didn't eat, didn't I learn problem solving skills, right? And we can dive deeper into that later. But I do feel like people who have nine to fives, you know, you're in such a great position because when I was walking into the office every day, I looked at it as if it was business school. I would, they were paying me to go to business school, you know? And so for me, like, that's like, you're in, in order to run a million dollar company, you have to see how one is run. So like, you're in a, a great position. You have a front row seat. That's, I mean, you said so many key points in just in that in that statement alone, and and again, like we see, we see you, and I, I I have to acknowledge that again, understanding um, the impact that mental health and self care um, can have, um, or how it's correlated to achievement is is really key, and and you mentioned like knowing your triggers. One of the things, especially as women, um, Summer mentioned this journey, you know, just before we started, is that we are, as we started, like this, we wear so many different hats, right? Some of us are mothers, some of us are, some of us are wives, some of us are our friends, some of us take care of our parents, some of us are running businesses or multi businesses, which many of us are doing. Um, and so, when is it the time to just rest? and pause and set the healthy boundaries. And that's part of, again, identifying your triggers, knowing what those are, but then also um, setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. And and I talk a lot about that with my team um, who is a mother and and has some young children and and a spouse. Um, And she has never worked for an entrepreneur before or a small business. And so that that conversation setting that up for her was really different because, people would just call her randomly throughout the day, but these are now working hours for her. And so I'm giving that particular story because the thing that she had to do was to say no, or I can't pick up the phone right now. And that didn't sit well with some people. People didn't understand like, well, well, no, but we've done this for a long time. And so again, just as you're talking about the the, the self-care piece and, and um, really understanding how it is correlated to achievement, goal achievement, business achievement, it's super, super key. I also want us to talk about, so um, the, the, those of you who've been connected to me before, like, you know, you know the deal. Anytime I, I want to connect with somebody, I don't just say, hey, yep, like, here, let's, let's connect. I do my research, aka I'm a professional stalker. So I did my dirt and Pollyanna, you, so I went back to 2013, girl, on your YouTube. 2013, you hosted a Dream Weaver workshop. Right. Yeah, I took it back. So you hosted this experience and, and I just was like listening to this video and I was like, oh, wow, like this is, it, it wasn't just a vision board party. It was so much deeper than that. Um, but the interesting thing is you also collaborated. You didn't do this one yourself. Mm-hmm. So can you talk a little bit about um, the vision, yeah. bringing it to life, but then collaboration all together to bring that to life? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm a big, like, I love vision board projects. Um, but I think that people limit themselves to just an art and arts and crafts projects and they don't really under know or understand the power of 
speaking things into existence. There's life and death and the power of the tongue, seeing and visualizing, like having uh, visualization practices. Like, you know, people get together and it's cute and you kiki and you cut and paste, but that's not all it is, right? Like I'm a vibe, I'm an experience. My vibration is high, right? I attract so many things into my life. I can't even tell you. And so, you know, I actually, you know, I work hard, but not as hard as people think that I do because I'm a super attractor. And so for me, like I spend a lot of time every single day, I go through my affirmations. I say them out loud. I say them with my chest. I, I go through my goals. I recite them every single day. My vision board is my is on my desktop. It's on my phone. Like I remind myself every single day of the mission and where we're going. And I think that when you one thing my mentor told me is that when you uh, one thing my mentor told me is that when you uh, 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 in your request to God and to your peers, you need to be specific. And I think that there's a lot of people who when they write down their goals. They're not specific. They say they want to buy a house and then it's just like period, full stop. Okay, like what tiles do you want? Do you want bay windows or do you want shutters, right? Do you want a gated community? Do you want your kids to be able to play in your yard? Like you have to paint the picture, right? Are you driving through wealthy neighborhoods or your ideal neighborhood, right? Like you have to paint the picture and be very meticulous and obsessed with the process. And so I started having vision board, uh, vision board parties many, many years ago because I wanted to, I wanted to share my insight. I wanted to share uh, the blessings that, you know, were bestowed upon my life. And so, you know, people, you know, people enjoyed them. Um, and, you know, it was a way for us to hold each other accountable. And one of my best friends in business, you know, she joins me, but yeah, that was the conversation. I want people to understand that energy is, is important. And even on the bad days, even when life sucks, your attitude matters. Super key. So I want us to do, before we dive into the, the side hustling piece, one mm -hmm. of the things, again, listening to some of your other conversations and then really just wanting to make this point here, you talk a lot about um, really learning a lot of, of what you now apply in your business, having learned that from corporate. So can mm -hmm. we talk a little bit more about that as well? Because I feel like that's going to be really good for a lot of people who are listening today, whether they've left, like they're currently in corporate looking to transition mm -hmm. or they have already left corporate and they can begin to like, just take that time to note, like, Hey, this is what I learned back then. And now I can go back and apply that. So mindset's important from day one, from the day you're onboarded, right? Like for me, <laughs> I remember my boss, like he was telling me like how much I was going to make. It was 65K. He was so excited. And I'm like, boy, like, anyway, <laughs> he was so excited. And I was like, okay, like you, the, here's the thing, right? The number that they bring forward, that's what they can afford. It doesn't amount to your true value. You feel me? And so like once I reprogram my mind, I'm like, okay, cute. 65K is cute. But like I knew, you know what I mean? Like I knew that I was so much more than that. So I think when going into a job, number one, you need to be very clear on what's on your checklist. I knew going into my previous role, I was an executive assistant for 10 years, just backstory. I knew going into my previous role that I was going in at my salary cap. Money wasn't important to me. I wanted a millennial driven environment. I wanted a boss who could be a mentor. I wanted, um, I want a really great like learning experience. I wanted unlimited vacation so I could take my business trips for my business. Like I had my checklist and money wasn't important. I think people go in thinking like, I want the salary and I want the title. It's positioning, right? I was in the admin, I was on the admin team. However, I assisted presidents, I've assisted CEOs. I've had the best position in the company. Right. And so I think it's just about perspective. Now, once you get in, you got to think about, OK, so that number is what they can afford. Doesn't amount to, you know, my potential. Right. And then the other thing is like, yeah, like they determine your salary, but you determine your total income. So like this, I just consider this one revenue stream. That's it. One revenue stream. I'm going to business school every day and I'm here to get the job done. So I remember in one time in my career, one of my bosses called me early in the morning on his way in. And he was like, Pollyanna, can you read me the sales reports? And I'd been working there for a minute and I realized that I didn't know how to necessarily break down the numbers the way he wanted it. And I was like, ain't this something? Like I'm here trying to be a boss, trying to be a CEO and all this shit. I can't even read a sales report. So then I, um, I re what I did was I, I had to check myself, 
right? I'm like, I'm not maximizing this role. So I started asking more questions, right? And that's when I really switched things into gear. And I really looked at my role and how I could take advantage of it. So I started asking if I could sit in on all the strategy meetings. I mean, we're talking three hour long meetings. I sat in strategy meetings and I asked to take notes. Every quarter I would do a sit down like a a 10 minute uh, informational interview, 10, 20 minute informational interview with all the heads of the departments, right? And so I really, and you know, listen, when there's OGs in the game, like they love talking about themselves, right? They're going to be happy to share what they've learned, what they do, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just listening because I know in my business, I currently wear every single hat. So I need to know the function and the role. So I'd be very keen on that. I always raise my hand. I ask a lot of questions. I remember our, the president of the company I worked for, and most recently she had um, what's called um, office hours. And so she had an open door policy and anyone in the company could come in and sit down. And uh, people were so afraid. They're like, if I ask her a question, maybe I'll get fired. I don't want to ruffle feathers. And people were so afraid. And, you know, me and my bold ass, like I went in there and I asked her questions and I sat down with her. I was very strategic. I used my journalistic background and I asked questions. And then I told her about what I was interested in. You know, she saw me as an executive assistant. That's all she saw me as. I know that I'm so much more dope than that. So I was like, listen, this is my skill set. This is what I feel like I can do for you. And I told her, I'm like, I know you do a lot of public speaking. I'd like to support you in that capacity. And she was like, oh, really? Tell me about that. Right. And so I, you know, I continued to tell her. And then I ended up writing for um, uh, one of her commencement speeches. She spoke at Lim College in New York. And uh, I wrote her commencement speech, and it was the same event where she got her honorary doctorate. And it was a very special moment for us. But if I didn't raise my hand, if I didn't go over into if I wasn't bold enough, and if, if I didn't have the audacity to share my, um, my, my additional skills, and that's the thing, I think people get very scared to share their additional skills, because then you, you think that your position will be threatened, you think that, you know, they may let you go. Listen, if I'm going into an, an office environment from day one, you're going to know anyways, because you're going to see me on the internet, period. The second thing is you're going to see my resume. It's stellar, right? Like I'm not just limited to my corporate, like I volunteer, I travel, all of these things. So you're going to have some questions. And from day one, I'm upfront and I'm very, very honest. And if it's a conversation where you make me choose, it will not be you, boo-boo. So you're going to have to figure it out. You know what I mean? So for me, I was always okay with walking away. My father taught me, he always used to tell me, you can always get a job. You know what I mean? You may not get the job you want. You may have to put pride aside. But at the end of the day, you can always get a job. So if this doesn't work out, like, don't worry about it. Don't trip, you know? So I really went in with a different framework. And I think this really helped me maximize the opportunity, um, you know, when I was there. Again, it all goes back to mindset, knowing your worth, recognizing your value, and then not being scared. So whether you're scared, whether you have that fear, right? Because sometimes you're like, your heart's beating out of your chest when you're walking into the spaces, right? Like that could Mm -hmm. could potentially be happening, but still being daring enough, bold enough, willing enough to shoot your shot because you might just sink it. That's mm-hmm. literally what I took away from that. And that's so key because essentially that's, that's why we're here. That's how we're here. And so I'll do this brief segue um, to interject this story. So we have an annual conference. We've been hosting this annual conference um, since 2017. And so we were like, oh, 2020 is going to be crazy, perfect vision, 2020, like it, we're, it, we're dominating. And then boom, Rona, shut it down. And we're like, all right. All right, I'm already having to figure out how I'm about to have this baby at home, but like, like trying to plan a virtual event, it, it I just, it, that's, that's a lot. And so yeah. I take that time and I said, you know, okay, I got to call all of our sponsors who committed to year two or year three or, you know, to, to sponsor. And I said, what are we going to do? And so, you know, I just like, hey, here's the situation. We're going to, we're going to postpone this year because there's so many moving parts. We're just going to postpone. That was that. Everybody was good with it. We'll try and come back 2021, right? Here's the interesting thing. What I ended up doing is I posted on a comment on social media, leverage social media. Um, and then I was like, oh, you know what? That's a word. I took my comment and I posted it as a post. And then Summer comes and posts on that post and says, this needs to be a workshop. <laughs> and my response to her was like, only if you do it with me and sponsor or something <laughs> of that nature. And we now are at the final installment of a boot camp. 
right? And yeah. so I share that piece again, just to your story. This is just another explanation of that same story. I was just joking when I responded to her saying only if you do it or no, only if you sponsor. Yet Comerica Bank is the sponsor of the boot camp that we're literally sitting on. And so regardless, you know, the one side of it, right, Pollyanna's story is that she was, she knew what her skills were and she walked in that room and said, hey, what, what are your thoughts on this? I said, hey, if, you, if you're ready, let's do it. And so, but either way, shots were shot and, and we both were able to leverage an incredible mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, and, and it really changed the trajectory of, of our careers um, mm -hmm. in entrepreneurship. And so I just wanted to give a, a, a second story or a second piece to exactly what Paulina just shared. Um, thank you, very great, very great piece. Um, Summer, I just wanna take a second, do you, so far, like I have some more questions to ask Paulina. Did you wanna chime in yet? Um, I can speak on it really brief. Hello, I love your story. Um, it's it's passionate and it's not superficial. Um, a lot of us that have had, you know what? A lot of us who've just lived life have gone through some stuff, you know? Everyone goes through stuff. And it's the, the difference is on what you do on the other side of that, of that trigger, of that difficult part. And I've noticed that some of the most amazing people still deal with their past okay they we always say our past is behind us but we still deal with it and our our parts that are about us that are so amazing um are kind of derived out of that line of i don't know what's going to happen to either i either i fall off this cliff or i fly like that is that is where we all are and that's kind of what so um, some of us fly, some of us fall. And it's it, the ones that fly saying, you know, I'm always worried about falling, but it's still, I'm still flying. I'm still going. I'm still amazing. And, and the pieces that you, you put together, I know we don't know your full entire story and no one ever is going to, um, but the pieces that we put together, it, it's, it's almost like we're all interlinked and interconnected with what we're doing. I mean, I think we're all saying the same thing. You, you work, you understand your worth, you understand your value, do what you can until you are able to be so amazing that people are paying you for, you know, for just for you to show up. And people are acknowledging, it's the payment really isn't there. It's just the fact that they're acknowledging the fact that you've gone through so much and you need to teach others the same thing uh, so that they don't have to go through as much. Whether they listen or not, that's up to them. But um, your stories, both you and Margo, uh, they're, they're stories of women, stories of power, stories that I'm sure have been told time and time again. And we're really reliving our history sometime, but it's just so that we can continue to speak to the future. So I wanna say thank you to both you and Margo for what you're sharing, what you're doing, the fact that you're able to have a life and, and enjoy life, but also give so much of yourself because getting paid, whether it's a hundred thousand or a million, it's not worth taking a piece of your soul from you. And, right. and the jobs that you guys do, it really, really, it clinches on your soul. It clinches on your life. And I, I do know this. It's a lot of passion that you have to put forward just to deal with people. And I, there's nothing wrong with people, but people pull so much from you that it's almost like every time someone comes to you, they take a piece of you. And it's just, it's time consuming, but it's spiritually, spiritually like difficult sometimes so thank you so much especially during this time the holidays are difficult for everyone sometimes so thank you guys for um being so bare and open and explaining to people how you've gone through the process and your your backstory on it so thank you very much but i'll, I'll chime in somewhere else but thank you guys for your story no that's big thank you so much summer for even just seeing that um i want to jump back Pauline. you you mentioned um the work with your bosses, the having your bosses as mentors. I, mm -hmm. I want us to make sure to drive this point home because it was a word the first time I heard it. Um, and I want to make sure, like I said, to drive this point home. How, if you can tell us, how do you develop a partnership with your boss? <laughs> oh gosh, especially, <laughs> especially, especially when they're white men who are so privileged and so egotistical and think they're the Ooh. shit and it's just like it's a lot and it's actually Ooh. it's it's comedy um I mean honestly so I worked in the presidential wing um and I was the only young black woman and I stood out because sometimes these 
they will try you. And so I always spoke up for myself. But like, again, for me, in my mind, it's like, okay, girl, you can always get a job. So be come, come to work with your full self, you know? And so I just started asking questions. And then they started pushing back and saying, like, why, like, why do you want to know this? Like what, because the thing is like, they're used to people just staying in their corner, doing their work. Right. And so I was just like, no, no, no. Why did you do like, what was the point of the strategy and how does it impact the bottom line? And so they got really annoyed. And then, you know what, they started saying like, Pollyanna, you know, walk with me, follow me. And then I would, I would try to take any, any single second I could, I would follow them to the meeting, drop them off at the meeting. Like anytime I could just like get inside their head, but you know what, like, honestly, people in senior people in senior positions, for the most part, I think they're honestly flattered. You know what I mean? Like, I think that like, you know, they're on, but they don't have a lot of time. So you just got to make sure you get to the point. You can't be wasting their time asking dumb questions. Like you got to make sure that you come correct. Right. Like if they give you homework or if they give you a task or actually the research, something, get the book, listen to the podcast, do this and bring it back and, you know, tell them how it applies. And so for me, it was just like, it was just a roundabout of that. Right. And so over time they realized my bosses like would literally ask, they knew that I had an expiry date at the company. They mm -hmm. knew that I was much smarter than they thought, than they thought I was. Um, and yeah, honestly, like, so I think honestly, it's gradually, it's over time and it may not be your direct boss. It could be another leader in an, in an entirely different department. You have to read the room, right? You have to like, you know, mentors, sponsors, both are very important. And so for me, you know, I was friends with the IT department and the HR department, the two most important departments you need on your side, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? I have my girls in HR. So I knew that if I was, if anything was ever going to go down, I would know first, right? I had my boys in IT because, you know, I listen, I have a cubicle. I built a six figure company for my cubicle. And if anything was going to go down, my boys in IT, we're going to, we're going to flag me. Right. So, <laughs> so we're gonna I, about we're gonna talk you, about had, that. you had to be, I just, I was very strategic. You know what I mean? I kind of, you know, I mess with people who mess with me, you know, and when you're young, when you're hungry, you know, you know, um, I mean, not even just young when you're just hungry and, and you want something, you know, you might get pushed back. Just, you know, if something's not working, just go somewhere else. Right. There's always someone who's willing to talk to you and open up conversation. Yep. No, doesn't it. No means next opportunity or new opportunity. Mm -hmm. It again, goes back to mindset. That's, that's killer. So you, you said it perfect segue. You built a six figure business from your cubicle. We weren't going to just scoot, scoot over that. Like we weren't going to just, <laughs> just divide over that one girl. So let's talk about that. Like, um, you, again, you just said that, you know, building the business from the cubicle, but yeah. how, how in the world did this happen? Like, how did you build your side? Like you, you, you had a side hustle, but then you yeah. went into full-time entrepreneurship. Like, what was that process? What was that? What was your own experience with side hustling I mean okay so I was a side hustler for a decade right um I was I was quite comfortable I liked the places that I worked I had a love-hate relationship with the places that I worked um but I wasn't just gonna quit like you know what I mean like for me I wanted to be very strategic it just I wanted to make sure that number one I paid down my debt as much as possible and number two I had a proven track record of se of selling for at least a year Right. Like, cause you can't have a business without sales. So it's like, if I can't, if I hadn't refined my skills, I was not going to jump. What's the point of that? Then I'm going to struggle to make money. So, um, there are a lot of things that I did over the years. I remember, you know, I rarely took lunch breaks. Like when I say lunch breaks, I mean, going out with your girlfriends and kikiing, I would use that time. I'd usually book a boardroom and I'd either work on my business or I would, um, I've been a public speaker since 2012, so I practiced my speeches in a boardroom, and I use that that lunch hour. Um, I, throughout my entire 10 years, 90% of the time I went to the office at 6 a.m. Um, I was an admin staff, so like you know, I could you know I could do that, and I could go. Most offices are open earlier. You know, if they know you're in the office early, they're going to let you in, right? Because they think they're, you're working for them. But for me, I would use that window to work on my own stuff. Right. And so then when everyone trickled into the office around nine and flopped into the office around 10 or whatever, then I'd start working on their shit. Right. So like I made sure, you know, my if I commuted, because sometimes I have to take the train, I was using that time to work on my sleep. I was finding pockets. I think some people think that like, okay, it's like nine to five, five to midnight. And sometimes it is, but you can also like break up the day if you can. So I was just making sure that I was leveraging my time as much as possible. Um, I uh so it wasn't 
I've always been a writer, right? So I've always been a writer, always been a journalist, but it wasn't until 2017 that I started my agency, um, The Writer's Block, which is a ghostwriting firm. Um, and so for me, my breaking point, before I started the firm, I was a journalist, I was freelancing, and it was all right. But you know, it wasn't necessarily allowing me to you know, financially to build the life that I wanted. I was in over $50,000 of debt, and I had a collections agent call me. And I remember I had to go into a corner of the office and I was just bawling because he wanted some money that I just didn't have. And he said, ma'am, he's like, you're way too young to be in this position. Like, this is like, what's up, you know? And so for me, I really had to, I really had to have a hard conversation with myself. What do I want to do with my business? Like, what are we actually doing here? Are we just going to continue to play play? Or are we going to get, are we going to, you know, get it, get it together? And so I am, this is going to be such a wild story. Jesus. Okay. So <laughs> My ex-boyfriend, Alex, ew, my ex-boyfriend, right? He, he, um, he scoops me one day and he's, he, he lives by, um, oh my gosh, I can't, Bridal Path. Oh, you guys don't know. Oh, I'm in Toronto. So Bridal Path is where like you have Celine Dion and, and Drake and all these like wealthy, you know, individuals. So he's Drake's house was under construction, right? It's, it's not a house. It's a castle. So we pull up and we pull up in front. It's like 2 a.m. And he, we're really big, again, big on visualization. So we just, you know, drive around wealthy neighborhoods. We talk about our dreams and stuff. So we pull up and he he pulls out a notepad. And I'm like, and I, he, you know, we have a thing. We just, you know, we were there writing our goals, the security. The security was in a big black truck and I'm sure had a rifle on us. Like I'm not even, <laughs> right? But anyway, so, and honestly, it was just really inspiring because like I just, I when I'm doing my goal setting, I love to be in inspiring environment. Switch up your environment. You don't have to do it in your household. So anyways, my point is like when I had this conversation with myself with like, girl, what are you like, what's next for you? Like that was a very pivotal moment for me because like I did it amongst wealth and luxury. And I'm like, you know what? I want to solve a problem for wealthy people. I'm not going to have an issue with clientele who don't got money. That is like, that is not even a thing anymore. And so yeah, I started my ghostwriting firm. Ghostwriting was something that was introduced to me in the corporate world because I was an assistant to presidents and CEOs. I was already technically like writing their emails, writing their statements. And then one of my mentors, she now does like PR for Serena Williams, Jill Scott, et cetera. She introduced me to the celebrity world um, around 2016-ish. And that's like, you know, that's 2016, 17. And that's really where I like my eyes kind of opened. And I was like, okay, you can really do something here. And so- I kind of just took off. So I hired smart. I hired fast while I was working in corporate. I hired other writers. I hired an assistant. I would take away, take my corporate check and invest it into my business, oftentimes walking away with next to nothing. And um, during that time, I remember the first, uh, one of the first, the first large invoice I issued was 50K to a client for a, pro for a ghostwriting project. And I was it, from that moment, I was like, boom, you got it. That was and that was the trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. Again, key point. I want to solve a problem for wealthy people. Period. For those of you who have been connected to me, we talked about no longer solving broke people's problems. So, <laughs> just another way to say that. Just yeah. another way to say that. Super key. Again, so with this, I mean, your story it, it, it's just super dynamic. Um, so we'll just go through this question quickly. Why should people pursue their side hustle? We have to ask that question. Why should people? I pursue I honestly, with the way with the way these governments are running, um, yeah. there's no like, there's no safety net. Like you, you really got to look out for yourself at the end of the day. It's not about whether or not you should pursue a side hustle is like, do you have the means to survive? Like, yeah, most people are doing it because they have to survive. It's not even like, oh, I have this passion and, and all this stuff. It's like, no, like I have to work side hustle because I need to pay my bills. You know what I mean? So I think that the things that you do for fun um, can pay the bills if you learn to master them. I yeah. think lot, I think most people just don't take the time. Um, they don't make the investment um, time and effort in order to master something. Right. So we're flip flopping. One day we're a photographer. The next day we're a horseback rider, then a babysitter, then a sous chef. And it's like, girl, like what? You know what I mean? Like one thing at a time. You know what I mean? You can't you can't give your time to 20 different things. Master one thing at a time and get really good at it. Double down on it. And you will be able to make money because if you're the best at what you do, people will hire you. Right. But I think people are just kind of mediocre and they're, then they're expecting to, to be able to cut big checks. And it really does not work like that. So side hustles. 
yeah, get your money any way you can, right? There's no reason for any of us to be broke, you know, like have an abundant mindset. And again, it's charging your worth, right? When I said $50,000 that first time, I was so scared. I was nervous. I, I had not even like, who am I? Like, what? Who am I? Right. But when homegirl was like, okay, I was like, okay, I that's I it. I was like, I could have. Anyways, I, when someone just says, okay, yeah. you know, you're just like, ma'am. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, like, I was good. I was like, listen, I was good moving forward. Now I'm cutting 50, 60, 70, 100. Like, you know what I mean? So get used to saying these big numbers out loud is what I'm saying. So when you, so when you're up to bat, you don't freak out, right? I could have, I could have thought 50 and then said 20, you know what I mean? But like, you have to commit, you have to commit and just know that it's a conversation. Know that, know that it's a conversation, know that things are negotiable, right? Mm -hmm. And just, you know, just be ridiculously good at what you do and no one will question you. And if they do, then you know, they're not your client that again super key and and you one thing that i do also want to mention um because i spoke with a client recently who's been in the other position as you you said um i could have thought 50 and said 20. had you said 20 that person may have also said no because if you lowball yourself they're like oh they're not going to necessarily bring xyz to the table or they're not going to do it the way i need it to be so there there's like there's two sides to what you said that's super pivotal. Um, and I wanna just press this a little bit further for everyone who's tuning in and listening to us um, um, as we stream through Facebook. When Pollyanna is talking about like, say these numbers out loud, say these numbers out loud, like literally at, whether it's at right now, black your screen out and go and stand in the mirror for a second. Um, no, listen to the rest of this conversation and go do it later because you're, there's more. But I'm really, really wanting to make sure to drive this point home because when you really understand that you have this impact that you can make in this world, right? Like that's one piece of it, but there is a number, a freedom number, a liberation number, whatever you wanna call it, that's also attached to that for you to, to really show up to get your job done and really understand that in the event space when we're putting events together there's a budget and if we don't like we can't lowball that budget or stuff doesn't get done like the speakers want to get paid the the venue is going to get paid right like these things have to happen they're not lower lowballing themselves they have their rates and those are their rates and if we can't afford it, right? There's a process, as Pollyanna mentioned, of negotiation. Um, but as well, they're still there's there's a line that they draw at what they're they're willing to negotiate. And so I just wanted to um, back that point up as well. Just understand, like whatever your number is, go higher, right? Yeah. And then get comfortable there. Go ahead, Pollyanna, if you want to chime in again. No, I was going to say normalize conversations um, around money and wealth with your girlfriends too. Right. Like it shouldn't be like I, I have so many girlfriends that have a plan for their hairstyle and their outfit every week, but no plans for the future. And it's like, boo boo. Like, I don't want to talk about your lipstick and your skincare routine every single time we have dinner. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I really would love to I like, can we expand the conversation a little bit? You know what I mean? So, yeah, like even when I have speaking engagements, if I see that my girls are on the bill, too, we have a group chat. We open up a group chat and like, what is everyone getting paid? Boom, boom, boom. And then yep. we figure out, you know what I mean? So like, we're all on the same level. So like, we try, I definitely, we're proactive when it comes to that. So I think it's really important because I actually had a girlfriend who, she, she's also a ghostwriter. And, and early in our relationship, like we talked money. And what I charged uh, for a particular project versus what she charged was probably four times more. Like wow. if we didn't have that conversation, she'd be still be making pennies like and wow. she has a family she's a mama like she's a wifey i'm like for that reason alone you should be charging more you know what i mean so if you normalize the conversations with your girlfriend it may be very eye-opening for you and again just these same points just to go back you know paulina mentioned um getting you know getting in close with your boss and, and mentors and sponsors mm -hmm. um in the corporate world sponsors a little bit different yeah. than yeah. the nonprofit world when you're seeking sponsorships right but nonetheless, it's, it's similar because the relationship that that 
Summer and I have, it kind of goes to this conversation around partnerships. And I talk about um, how partnerships can be more sustainable than sponsorships. A lot of not people in the nonprofit world, they're like, they're after the sponsorship, which is just the monetary dollar or mm -hmm. the, the monetary amount or in kind of what have you. But for us, it's, it's longevity. We believe that there's a life cycle in the partnership. And so we talk, we talk every once in a while about life, right? Like yeah. I know that that Summer has a family and there's things that she's doing and she moved into a new house. And I'm like, let me see the house. Give me a tour. Like, it's not just, hey, give me your money. Thanks, bank. Like, that's <laughs> not what our relationship is. Like, yeah. I know a little bit about her and she knows a little bit about us. And she mm -hmm. extended grace when I had my baby because we wanted to do the boot camp early. But she knows what it's like to have a baby. And I was like, yeah, no, we can still do it this week. She said, girl, you had a baby a week ago. <laughs> Sit down. We're starting yeah. next month. Right? Yeah. Like, that was a relationship. That's where the, the partnership was involved there. And so yes, normalizing the money conversations with your girlfriends, with your partners, the individuals who are, are really contributing to your vision or just people who you like, I don't know this, I, I wanna ask. And then two, if you don't particularly have those people in your relationship, um, in your network, still reach out to other people. And that kind of goes back to our earlier point of shooting your shot. Like, hey, um, Pollyanna, like, I know you're doing this. And I overheard this conversation with you, Margo, in summer. And, and like, I, I don't know what I, like, I don't know this thing about money. Like, can, can you give me some insight? You know, can I hire you? Whatever that conversation would look like, definitely leverage those type of conversations too. Super key, super transformational mm -hmm. um, as you go in, and begin to pursue and experience your next level. How do you know when you're ready to transition into full-time entrepreneurship? Um, so like I said, for me, it was two key things, paying down my debt as low as possible. So I had over $50,000 of debt and with the income that I earned through my business, through my side, when I quit, I had 2018, I'd earned $147,000 from my side hustle. So I paid down my debt. And then I walked away. Um, and again, I had a proven track record of selling. So I, I felt confident that I could sell my product or service. Um, and then, yeah, so for me, those are the two key things. I mean, depending, it's kind of relative. Like you have to, it depends on your situation. Yeah. It depends on whether you have children to feed. It depends, I'm a young, single, like I ain't got no man or maybe daddy, right? So like, you know, I'm taking care of myself. Like I don't have to, you know, I don't have to feed little ones. You know what I mean? I mean. Yeah. So it really just, it really depends, depends on your circumstances and what your responsibilities. I want people to be responsible because this is not just something you can kind of play, play with. You like, you really, yeah. you're not, you're not going to feel a hundred percent ready. Right. Mm -hmm. But like in terms of crunching the numbers, you definitely want to have like a cushion. You definitely want to have like a plan of some kinds. Like don't just jump just cause you, and you have to be ridiculously good at what you do. Don't jump if you're mediocre. Like that's just not, that's not the way, right. You don't want to, it just, does, it just does not make sense. Like, wait until you're ready. And when I mean ready, I just mean like, you have the job, like just, you know, go through, you know, go through the motions. I mean, I don't get it twisted. I have friends who just jump and they just go and they just fly and they, they like being pressed against the wall. Not everyone's like that. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I don't know, at some point you definitely have to like, you know, uh, hit go. Um, Cause like I said, that nervousness will always be there. It's not going to flee. Um, but like, be smart about it. And this is part of the reason why, number one, I wanted to make sure to include this conversation. Mm -hmm. I was strategic about putting this conversation last as our final um, segment. And then also my story. Um, I jumped. I was 2015. And so I started my company in 2013. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was, um, I had three jobs. I was the manager at a sober living facility. Um, that was traumatic. I was also an adjunct professor at a university. And then I did some, um, some time with, did some time and stuff like I was in jail. Um, that's a whole nother part of my story that we're not talking about today. Um, <laughs> I ended up serving as a, um, like a, 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 a administrative aide with a high school. So I was literally everywhere and um they pretty much gave me an ultimatum at the university and because what was happening is some of the students i would come in from uh, with my t-shirt with my branded t-shirt on and so what do you do what's that shirt and i'm like oh well it's my business but i can't talk about that here because it's 
work. Um, but people, I guess, started researching and looking up, discover her, and they were like, wait a minute, so you're a coach and you do this and blah, blah, blah. Wait, you're an author, you have conferences, like, what is this? And so they ended up giving me an ultimatum. They said, hey, like, too many people are asking these questions about your business. And I'm yeah. like, well, I'm not an institution. I'm not going to steal these people who are paying tuition to go to college. Like, why? What's the issue? Yeah. And they ended up saying like, well, you need to, you need to pick number one, you can't wear your business clothes here. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's reasonable, I guess. Um, but you're, you're going to need to pick, like, you're, you're going to be full-time here. Or I'm like, how are you going to tell me what I'm not going to do in my, my, like my time? Right. Um, and so that I jumped and I said, okay, well, I'm out. And I didn't know I was going to say that. They definitely didn't know that, that they that I was gonna say that. They actually asked me to stay on, and I was like, "No, the fact that you guys gave me the ultimatum, you don't. You're not concerned with what I have, um, or what like what because like, this this wasn't just something that I pulled, you know, pulled out out of myself. Right. Like, this, I know I believed adamantly right. like, the vision that God gave me, and and so I jumped. 2015, I I had a one client, and I was like, "Yeah, we're about to make this money." Um, definitely wasn't charging my worth at that time. And that client was gone and I'm like, right. Oh, let me go get another job real quick. And I did that every once in a while. Like I, I got my clientele up. It was working, working, working. I was like, Ooh, money's looking funny. Let me get back to a little job real quick. Hustle, hustle, <laughs> hustle. Got my money back up. Cool. Mm -hmm. Got, you know, got a couple more clients and money was looking funny. Did the same thing. And, I, and then in, I think it was 2018. I was like, no more. Right. You're not doing this again. And that's when I put my foot down. Um, we pivoted the company and didn't take a, a, a side hustle again, or well, my corporate yeah. for me was my side hustle instead, but I didn't do that again. And that's what shifted and changed the trajectory for me because I made that commitment to go all in. Yeah. You got to commit. That's the thing. Like you got to commit and it's going to be hard and you're going to hate it and you're going to cry. It's going to be all the things, but you got to commit. You got to remember, just remember why you started, right? Like I kiki a lot about like, you know, you know, I definitely make a good living and I love the people that I work with, but like, I know the underlying reason why I became a celebrity ghostwriter, because when I, I'm very fascinated with the influencer economy, I'm very fascinated with celebrity culture. And oftentimes the leaders that, you know, the entertainers that we put in leadership positions, like we've seen that, you know, a lot of them are incapable of leading us anywhere. And it used to, it used to just puzzle me. It used to be like, who's, who's advising these individuals. And so that's who I became. I became a communications advisor. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's like, it's, you know, the most meaningful thing that I do, I don't even get credit for. You know what I mean? Like my team is the cornerstone to a lot of pop culture moments, books, noteworthy speeches. Nobody knows we exist. And that's okay. I don't need the credit, right? Um, I just need the check to clear. Uh, but for me, it's like, you know, I'm doing meaningful work. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing, like it has significance and that's what's important to me. That's part of legacy building. And so when you, when you do something, like you're not just starting an eyelash business, you're not just starting a t-shirt line just for the heck of it. When you have, when you know what you stand on, morals, values, belief system, when you know what you fight for, when you know what conversation you want to contribute to at a community level, industry level, or the world at large, like that's what helps you push through when there's like a much more important meaning behind the moves that you're making, the conversations that you have and how you view the world and yourself. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> look, this is good. Look, I was, I was just too excited. Like this is cool. <laughs> I told you gems were gonna be thrown and and if you don't have your pen and paper, you're lucky we got the replay because you, you definitely need to go back. And and I'm I'm seeing one of my team members is on and um she says and I, I embedded this into all of my team members and she goes fo focus, follow one course until successful. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's key in that, like you, you, again, you mentioned um, morals, values, belief systems, and that's one of our pillars. That's one of the things that, that we make sure to understand, like, it's not just my vision. Number mm -hmm. one, I, I, I submit it back to the source. I submitted our business back to the source. So, right, like God gave you the vision, now we're executing. But then the team that you have when you're delegating, um, it's really important that you understand the people who are involved, they have to really see and understand the vision as well. They have to be a part of the process. Right. Um, and I think that I think the the really key piece is you know jumping back to our earlier piece of what you mentioned is is kind of allowing that 
that space for them to ask questions, for them to give their input, um, and for them to feel like they are part of the 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 overall experience of what you're bringing to life. Um, and I think that's super key too, as we're articulating like what what does it look like not putting your day job? How do you begin the process? Um, mm -hmm. I think that's super 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 key. Another question, a really good space, um, a question that we got from one of our participants is what systems should you have in place to succeed? Like, I'm, I'm assuming that question is coming from like that transition. Um, right. From full -time team. I mean, my systems were a mess. Like I'm not even going to act like I had everything all together. Like um, time management, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, because I supported busy people, I knew how to manage my time. Right. So that was a huge hack for me. Um, like I said, I did all the things and I fit them in, you know what I mean? Like I managed my day to day, um, hiring smart, hiring fast. So even though I was at work, of course I was able to do some of my own stuff, but client projects still need to be executed, et cetera. So I hired an admin, an admin person. Then I hired two writers to start and, you know, we got the ball rolling slowly. Um, and then like, you know, cause the thing is like, I really didn't have, at the time, I didn't have a project management system. At right. the time, I didn't have accounting software. Like there, there is some, in the beginning, you're probably gonna be scrappy because you don't know what you don't know, right? And so for me, like, you know, obviously now, like I can't survive without things like that. But in the beginning, I really didn't, my back end was as chaotic as, it was, it was, it was in shambles, right? But I like, I know how to sell. I, I value customer service a great deal. And I know how to execute. So yeah, my back end was pretty shit, but I was able to still keep the keep the ball rolling. So I feel like if you can nail down your time management and you can you start building a team early, I feel like that's a really, really good place to start. But now, like, you know, like I just revealed, if you have um, a project management tool, you just have to you just have to keep the I mean, it was chaotic, but I still I'm a visual learner. So I've always kind of um, played within um, organized chaos. Right. So even though things are all over the place, I still know where, where, I, where I need to be and what I need. So for me, I just, you know, made sure I just made sure that, like, I knew what needs to be done and what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. So like I can't, you know, what I mean, because now because the thing. OK, so people see that I'm a I'm a I'm a writer and I do my thing. But when I first started, like I had a blog, I started a blog 2010. It wasn't fancy. It didn't have no glitter. Everyone wants perfection. Like, I don't. I don't suffer from analysis paralysis, right? I'm going to hit publish. I'm going to, I'm going to do all the things, even if it looks half crazy, because I know that I'm going to evolve. And I know that my, whoever's watching me will appreciate the evolution. So for me, it's like, you know what I mean? Like I just, I just go and I learn things on the fly and I don't allow things like that to paralyze me. Right. So as long as I'm good at what I do, like Summer had said, as long as you're really good at what you, people will show up for you, they'll pay you, they will hire you, they'll refer you. And so like, I just kind of like use that as leverage until I, I figured out more about like how my business should be operated. That's super, like, again, so many more gems in that piece. We have, we do have another question. And I think this is really good. I put some additional notes with it. Um, somebody asked, what are some top tips to study your current work environment? That's a good question. Um, pay attention to, so I worked alongside CEOs and presidents. So I pay attention to where their time was allocated. 90% of their time, you ever, if you pay attention to your boss, does your boss actually do anything? Right? Like typically they're <laughs> right. Like everybody below them, right? I don't mean below, but you know what I mean? Right. Everyone around them is reporting to them, bringing them the presentation for approval, bringing them the documents to sign, right? Like their teams, typically you know um manage the business and as a ceo what i've learned is that my job is to grow it so that's that's one thing right so my boss has spent 90 percent of their time in the air and in meetings nurturing relationships right selling the product and then bringing it bringing it home so that the team can take over um so like just pay close attention to what their roles and functions are um, pay close attention to business vocabulary, like not letting things go over your head. So you really understand, like, like teach yourself business as a second language, I would mm -hmm. say, right. If there's, if there's an acronym that comes across your desk, like ask what it means. Um, volunteer to sit in meetings, right. To take notes, 
right? Like, ask, you know, and like, they will, they will let you, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, the right, the right people will let you because I mean, they're happy to have some minutes taken or just, you know, ha- create a learning environment, a learning experience for you. So volunteer to sit in meetings. Um, what else? And just pay attention to your surroundings. Like, you know what I mean? Like question things that I feel like we don't question the things that we're taught. Like ask, you know, when, you know, kids, you know, when they do all the things, you know, they're curious and they ask us why and why and why, you know, but as we get into adulthood, we just kind of get comfortable with the things that are presented in front of us. Right. So like ask a lot of questions, um, but not just listen. I do think there's there are such things as dumb questions. And for me, like ask and then maybe it's because I'm a journalist, but you want to ask well thought out questions like well researched don't just don't he's you don't have time that's the thing you don't have time to waste with these individuals so ask smart questions so you can get a smart specific answer again that's uh, what you're what you're breaking down here is something that's going that's going to allow people to leverage again whether they are currently transitioning out whether um COVID impacted them to where they had to transition um this is a key and and for me it's like being a problem solver it's like oh what's an innovative way to still try and leverage opportunities right um right so like anticipating needs right and anticipating needs and see where you can so like I said I yep. volunteered to write speeches for the president. I didn't have to do that. I didn't want it like didn't necessarily want to have to any of those things, but I'm like, I knew that it would give me great positioning. She now knew who I like, she now had a we now had a deeper relationship, right? Um, she now knew my skill set outside of my role, yes. right? So like seeing where you can fit in. And it's so crazy because but prior to asking her to do that, I actually applied for a communications role. And they told me that I wasn't qualified because I didn't go to because I didn't go to school for communications. Okay. So I skipped over them and I went straight to the decision maker. And she was like, cool, right? So it's like life is chess. For me, chess is is a metaphor for life and business, right? Mm-hmm. That would probably be the biggest takeaway from this discussion. If you are unfamiliar with chess, you better get familiar. You need to know how the how the game is played because that's those are the people who win. I don't care how hard you work, how talented you are. The people who really win know the players on the board. They know the function. They know they can see the game two steps ahead. Right. They understand there's consequences to every decision you make. Right. So like that's probably like the biggest thing I've been playing chess since I was a kid. Right. And I think that's why I'm, I'm able to make the plays that I do, because I understand, OK, if I do this, I know like I, I can see like where it's going to take me like six steps you know, ahead of the game. So for me, it's like that's how I look at everything. That's how I like that's how I like make, that's how I make my decisions. I'm going to ask I'm going to I'm going to shoot, shoot my shot here. Show of hands. Who does not know how to play chess? Type in the comments like if you don't know, look, I get it. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, and I'm serious because this, the, what you're saying here is, is so big. And I'll tell you, so at the BYOB conference, I don't know if you remember in the lobby, they actually had like a huge chess board. Girl, mm-hmm. I was playing with complete strangers because again, like there's so much, they, there's a, there's, there's strategy behind that game. Um, and so I want to do something for, for those of you who don't know. So, you'd, um, We'll, we'll get connected, but I want I want to make sure to provide a couple of resources, but you definitely want to, you need to learn that game. It's not even about a want to. Anymore. Yeah, but I think learn. not just, not just chess, right? Like, yeah, like uh, participate in brain games. Keep your mind yes. sharp, right? Like Jim yes. Quick is a really good resource, right? Yeah. Jim Quick, um, oh shit, I just bought his book. I can't remember what it's called, but he just, he just released a book that is really, really good. Um, he has a ton of videos on YouTube. He is a celebrity brain coach. He teaches yes. you how to retain information, how to better your memory. Um, you know, he talks about brain foods, like all of that good stuff, right? Like you just yeah. really have to think about what are the, I wish people asked more questions about the habits, routines, rituals of successful people, right? Like the systems and the sparkle and the social media, all that's good. But if you don't have the foundational pieces, it doesn't matter. It right. does not matter, right? You have to know the foundation. There's a um, one of the best books I've read multiple times, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. It goes through the habits, the rituals, and the routines of the world's most successful millionaires and billionaires. And it's it's categorized in three sections, healthy, wealthy, wise, there is something in there for you, right? So like learning how to be more productive is very, very important. Like a lot of people are just out here being busy.
That's right. I don't know how to spell brain. If you saw that chat, don't judge me. <laughs> All good. But nonetheless, <laughs> yeah. Can you say that that second book as well? I want to type. Uh, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. Tools Paris. of Titans. Definitely mm -hmm. take those down. Yeah, Jim Quick is a good one too. Um, that's super key. Two other tips that I want to add in there, and you, you essentially alluded to them as well, but the tips to really study your work environment, again, whether you are, are currently still at corporate or you just transitioned out or COVID sort of forced you out of that mm -hmm. space, start small and then build big. That's another key piece. And then understanding time and priority management. And there's, there is a difference between time and priority management. Um, Pangina, do you want to take a second to really break that down a little bit, the difference between time and priority management? I can take that if, you, if you're good. I mean, feel free. I've been talking the whole time. No, you're good. It's all about you. It's all about you today. Um, <laughs> so uh, really understanding like the difference between the time management and priority, time, uh, priority management. Pollyanna talked about the time management piece is really understanding like what, what does it, how, like your schedule, how much time in a day do you have and, and being able to delegate effectively with what you have to do. Again, mm -hmm. if you have multiple roles, really understanding like how much time do you really have to commit to your venture and your vision. Um, so I'll use myself for example. So um, I, I do have a set schedule for the week there's certain things that I follow every day like my Mondays are professional development days I don't mm -hmm. work with clients that's all I do I have content days where we batch I have days for clients I have event day like there's days that are specifically designated for something specific um but that's one aspect of that. And so there's where time goes in there. The other side of this is I do annual planning. And so I reverse engineer my entire year. So I'm like, okay, cool. Here's the 12 months Smart. vision. Yep, here's the 12 months vision. But then I, we break, the team breaks it down for the quarter and then we break it down for the month. And then that allows us to look at, okay, these are what we have to achieve for the week, have to achieve for the day. And then again, I'm a wife. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband will definitely make sure we have time together. I'm a mama of three. Um, we, uh, it's not just we all spend time with all the kids together. We got some individual one-on-one -on -one time, right? Like there's layers to what I do outside of the business. I also have three businesses, right? Like So there's layers to what we're talking about. And again, in, um, when it talks about time management, that's where we can begin to have a conversation on priority management. What takes precedence? I'm going to speak again to that schedule. I wake up at 4.30 every single morning, 4.30 our time because it's 7.30 East Coast time. I need to make sure I'm good with my people over there um, just so I'm not missing the mark. That's what I choose to do. Um, the other side to that is I'm off by five o'clock, like I'm done with work, but here's what I made sure to do. This goes into the priority management. I have an alarm set um, at 4.45 telling me it's time to wrap up. And so that last 15 minutes, I'm actually not working on work. I'm finishing up a task um, or I'm saying, okay, this is what needs to go into the next day because I didn't finish. So I just wanted to break that down for everything that we're, we, we've been talking about today as and really understanding like time management yeah. is essential, but priority, like how do you manage or how, yeah. do, you, how do you manage your priorities? Delegation is everything. Yep. Like I delegate everything. Yep. And that has just been a saving grace for me. I ha I've had an assistant for four years. I know that's a luxury. Um, I have an assistant for my assistant. That is also a luxury. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I want to focus. I want to focus on my zone of genius at the end of the day. I want to focus on growing the company. I want to focus on strategy. I want to focus on relationship building. I'm doing a million Zoom calls a day. You know what I mean? And it's not all like, you know, I'm not always closing deals. Like you said, with Summer, like sometimes you're just nurturing the relationship. You're, did you eat today? How are you? How's your heart? How's your family? Right? So that's important to me. So I delegate a lot of the shit on my plate. Yeah. And I think this is the last question. I know a few uh, people have comments for you because um, you killed it. I said it before then. But the last question is how do you articulate the skills and value that you bring to the table? Elevate pitch, Boom. right? So um, I have a lot to say on this, but um, the most important thing is like you really want to don't wait until you have the opportunity to practice. Like that's not your practice time, right? You should be writing down, writing it down and practicing at home, right? When you're vacuuming, washing dishes, hanging out around the house, get familiar, get comfortable. So that when you do, because this has happened to me numerous times, when you leave your house, you do not know who you're going to bump into. I no. cannot even tell you how many times I've bumped into key decision makers unexpectedly. Um, and I've had to articulate 
my zone of genius and how it could benefit them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I went to New York. Well, I go to New York all the time. Um, I'm typically there like half the, half the year, but I went to New York one time. I was in the lobby of a building, very New York style, you know, this Jewish guy who owned the building. I later found out was like, what do you do? I told him what I did in a very clear, concise manner. I didn't talk about the weather and all that bullshit. And I closed a $20,000 contract on the spot, right? Because he, it, it, there was, you know what I mean? Like I got to the point and he was like, oh, I need someone like you on my team. It was like, it was like a no brainer. And so yeah. while that doesn't happen, that doesn't happen every day, you want to sure. be prepared for the opportunity that presents itself in front of you, right? And so you can start with your professional identity, right? Who you are, what you do, how you help, right? The most important part of, your elevator pitch is the transformation, right? Make sure you touch on that if they're unfamiliar with your work. You know, how do people experience you? You know, what is the result that they will experience as, as you know, if they work with you, et cetera. But yeah, just, you know, keep it short, keep it sweet, get to the point. And, you know, you don't need to tell your whole life story. Like if they're interested, they will ask layered questions and the conversation will continue. Absolutely. Well, everyone... <sighs> Pollyanna. I had a great Thank time. You so, so much for, for joining us. Um, Summer, I'll let you, you know, share like what was your major takeaway that, you know, we can send everyone off. Um, again, this is our final segment of this first rendition of the Comerica Business Bootcamp series. And, and again, we have to thank you, Summer, for joining us specifically every single segment, every single segment. Um, and, and thanks so much, Comerica Bank, for again, seeing the vision and being part of this process. Um, any, any final remarks to really send our, our people off? Well, I mean, this has been amazing. The whole series, um, this particular one being the last one, I think is very important because a lot of people have jobs. A lot of people need, and they have a business or they have an idea of a business. So it's fantastic to kind of link everything and see what, what you need to do or where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. um, and, and personally, you know, me, I work, but I absolutely love what I do. Honestly, I'd probably still do what I do without the paycheck. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but I give money to people who need it. So if I could spend the bank's money and get paid to spend the bank's money, I'm going to keep on spending the bank's money. Okay. Bless that God. is, and I, yeah, exactly. I give it to our community. I give it to organizations. And it's it's because I'm the liaison. I have a pulse on the community, pulse on the bank. But with that, I'm able to produce businesses. My businesses are six-figure businesses, of course. And I need them to be a seven-figure business before I change anything. So that's where my goals are so that everybody else knows as well. Yes, I have successful businesses. I have successful, I have a success, successful career, successful family. Um, if you know my family members, we're very successful. When Pollyanna spoke on having those conversations, it's not, having a conversation that embodies wealth is not um, superfluous. It's, it's not a place of thinking, oh, I'm just going to talk about it, but I really don't mean it. No, you really need to mean this information. I think that a lot of people always want to know kind of where my change was, because we know, if you know my story, it came from an LMI community, low to moderate income, not a lot of money, moved here with $25 from Cali. Like it wasn't big. It was like a Cinderella story for my parents, but it still left us kids without understanding who we were, what we were. So we had to kind of understand that throughout our lives. And with that, we understand the, the benefit and the wealth of being together you know, as, a, as family and your foundation. If you don't have family and your friends, whoever supports you, they need to understand. And we always throw around your vision, your mission. They under, need to understand you. They need to understand if you're having a bad day. They need to understand if, if, you're, if you're on the verge of, of failure and how are you going to manage that. They need, they need to understand like the deep things that just looking at you without having to talk to you. If I pick yeah. up the phone and I know, and I know you, and I hear that, I'm just like, oh no, some, something's off. That's the person I need to, regardless of if they believe in my vision or not, they're going to understand those things. But they, that will in doubt have them believe in who I am. If they understand me to a core principle where I, I don't have to speak in order for them to get me, that's who you want in your circle. That's who you want around you. So remember that and having those conversations, like I said, we, our last conversation about travel, 
do you want to lease a jet or do you want to fly first class? Like those are our conversations. Do you want to spend $36,000 and just split it on our vacation? Like, I don't know. I'd rather buy a house. Like those are our conversations. Yeah. It's not, we're, we're not trying to figure out, can you fill up your gas tank? Like those are conversations from 20 years ago. We don't need to learn how to fill up our gas tank and borrow money and get gift cards for something or go get your, your glass fixed so that you get a hundred dollar check from your, from getting your glass done. I mean, if anybody's ever been in poverty, it's hard to get out of that poverty mindset. Yeah. Get out of the poverty mindset so that you can build your business. And that's one of the ways, because if you have a poverty mindset and you go to give your elevator pitch, pitch, sorry, not pitch. <laughs> if you go to tell somebody about your business, but in the back of your mind, you still think that you're living on, you know, store brand this, and I can't, I'm only going to survive on $25 a week at the grocery store, then it's going to come through in your conversation. You have to have a wealthy mindset in order to pitch those that you want to get money from. So just, just remember that we're going to keep on continuing this. Pollyanna, you've been absolutely amazing. Nice um, you've been you. truthful. Very nice to meet you too. You've been extremely truthful and um, very, very open to, to where you are, where you're going, where you've been. And that's the key thing for everyone. You need to be, don't be super open now. Don't give everybody all the information, but give them information that tells them a little bit about where you are, why it's not fake, and why you're going to do so much more in the future. So as Comerica, yes, I'm a VP of corporate communications, external affairs uh, market manager for the state of Arizona, only black woman here handling these things, not many people doing it in this color. Yes, I know we, we, we want to deal with people who look like us, but guess what? You don't have to deal with people who look a little bit different. So continue those relationships, build on those relationships, and and cultivate it. And like I say, do it with class, do it with ease, do it with grace and see how much power you have in just observing the room. So um, congratulations to everyone. I'm so excited for our pitch competitions. Get those elevator pitches. And I'll tell you what my brother says, because y'all know Dom Fawcett, he always talks about recording yourself, do recording every single day of your pitch. Talk to people, let them know who you are put it on social media, put it on Facebook, do all that so that when you go out there to tell somebody who you are and what you do, you're not stuttering and, and tripping over your words. So remember to do that. I'm excited about it. I know Margo's going to go over a little bit more dates and times and all that other fun stuff. But um, thank you guys so much for allowing Comerica be to be here. If you have any questions, I am certainly here. Um, and I look forward to 2021. Let's get out of 2020. Let's, let's kick that one to the curb. So thank you. Awesome. It was Absolutely. nice to see everybody. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you, Pollyanna. I know you got to hop off so you can go ahead and we'll just close out everyone. Again, thank you so much for being with us and, and we're really grateful for you. Um, so we just want to share just a final, you know, just a final reminder that yes, definitely get your submissions in. There's still some time um, for the nonprofit pitch competition. Again, it's free. It's free money. It's free money. So definitely go ahead and leverage that. Again, we are um, uh, Discover Her Worldwide is presenting, Comerica is sponsoring a $1,000 cash prize for one nonprofit founder. There's a number of other goodies that you'll get. There's like a first place, second place, third, I think it goes up to like a fifth place recipient. So like we've connected with some really solid um, community partners to provide you with not just this, you know, the, the $1,000, which can make a difference for, for some of our organizations, but also um, with some additional resources and, and, and training and coaching, um, I'll just share it with you. We have the next phase of our cohort um, starting January 7th, and one of you will actually be getting um, a complimentary admission into that nine week program. So get it in because again like that is um that that program is not is a value of nineteen hundred dollars so you, there's there's a lot that that we're wanting to gift to you and provide to you um so um congratulations for all of you who've already submitted because you may be in the runner up even if you aren't the main um, um recipient of that cash prize but nonetheless like definitely show up invest into you and just tell your story and if you're like oh i haven't been on video or i don't want to tell my story get creative and I'm, this is the only hint that I will give you, especially because there's only a week left. Um, put together a presentation, put your voice in the background. Again, like find innovative ways to show up, tell us your story, tell us who you are, the impact that you're gonna make. Um, and, and just again, head on over to discoverher.org. Uh, all the details are there for, for you. So again, 
This is our final segment for the year. Um, Summer and I, we've already had the conversation. We are going to be coming back, but there's more work to do. And so with that um, work that's required of us, there are things that we need from you. We, we need to, to know what were some of your major takeaways, what resonated, um, what are you going to be applying moving forward so we can continue to bring value to each of you. And so um, at the end of um, this segment, probably in the next 20 minutes, you will be receiving an email um, and we'll go ahead and post that on um, Facebook as well, where there's a link to provide your feedback for this particular segment. And if you missed the feedback from any segments, you can go back and post um, what was your major takeaway from those others, but give us your feedback, share your major takeaways. Um, and I think that's it. I know somebody had um, a, a comment. Um, Sharika, did you wanna still share your comment? I know Pollyanna hopped off, but if you wanted to share, you still can. Yeah, no, it was just, it's um, it's one of those when someone validates some of the stuff you've been doing. And so with her, like when I was at the fire department, the chief would go on walks. So I would go on walks with him to have that conversation or, you know, like those various things, or I would get up at 6 a.m. to meet with another director because that's when he got into the office and we would meet at Subway or something. So it is, it's just good to hear that some of the things I've done over the years to get my nonprofit where it's at, um, as far as adjusting the time and doing all that, it's like, oh, okay, I'm not the only one out here <laughs> having these crazy unconventional type meetings. And, you know, when you do walk into an elevator with somebody that they don't know you or whatever, you know, like I did it to our, our CIO of our organization where, he, you know, he, I was like, oh, hi. I literally, the, it was the elevator full of men and he was in the middle and I walk in and I was like, oh, I'm Shrika. I'm da, 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 da. And I did, and everybody's faces was like, I was like, dude, you gonna know this, all this. <laughs> so I do, I do the same thing. I'm just like, I'm gonna shoot my shot, as they say, and I'm going to, you're going to know who I am um, because I've worked hard to be in this position and you're not going to dismiss me because I may not look like you or talk like you or act like you because they're, the complaints that I have heard is I ask too many questions. Okay, well, I'm still gonna ask questions. That's not gonna change. And as somebody is gonna be the right question. So it literally is like almost the same thing she was saying. So that's why I was just like, oh my God, it's like someone's talking back at me. So that's what my comment. And I think that's the biggest thing um, for not just you, Sharika, but every everyone who's, who's tuning in, who's gonna be watching the replay is really understanding that, um, again, not just this conversation with Pollyanna, but every single segment, there was something that resonated. There was something that struck a nerve. There was something that really woke us up saying, no more, or oh, I'm grateful that I had that reassurance because I've been doing it all along, right? Trust the longevity of your process. You are called to make a significant impact um, and imprint in this world. You just have to be willing to invest into your personal and professional development. So that is it. We have come to a close. Thank you for giving us a few extra minutes for just to wrap up everything and, and guide you where you need to go. Um, again, look out for those emails um, and, and we look forward to seeing the impact that you make in this world. Until next time, let's continue making an impact. Blessings. <laughs>